Good afternoon, or good morning, whichever the case might be. I am John E. Morey, the son of T. Henry Morey. Nikola Tesla said there is energy throughout space, that this energy was kinetic, and that it would be only a matter of time when men would hitch their machinery to the very will work of nature. My father, T. Henry Morey, did his work and discovered this energy. Welcome to our show exploring one of the most fascinating mysteries in the field of energy. The story of T. Henry Moray and his purported invention that tapped unlimited power directly from the environment. It's we'll dive into Moray's incredible claims, the resistance he faced, ongoing research inspired by his work, and what it could mean for our understanding of physics and energy production. We begin by providing background on Moray, a self-taught engineer and author from Utah who made waves in the late 1920s with his supposed breakthrough device. Conventional in many ways but with an inventive mind, Moray dedicated himself to unraveling the secrets of natural energy sources. Through archived interviews and writings, we learn of Moray's lifelong passion for electrical experimentation and his evolving views on untapped reserves of cosmic energy all around us. His interdisciplinary studies led him to believe revolutionary discoveries were on the horizon. Eyewitness accounts describe Moray's bulky apparatus, nicknamed the Radiant Energy Device, which he claimed could power engines, heat holes, and illuminate streets all without external fuel or utilities. But how exactly did it work? That was the $64,000 question. We detail Moray's first public exhibition of his invention's power in 1929, where he lit over 100 light bulbs to the amazement of scientists. His successful tests captured headlines, but also aroused controversy and suspicion about the device's true energy source. Using Moray's own words from interviews, we examine his insistence that his machine extracted usable energy directly from the invisible fluctuations of the quantum vacuum, or background sea, of electrons permeating the environment. But what were the physics behind such a prospect? After the initial successes, Moray dedicated years to attempts to miniaturize and mass produce a marketable version. We track his ongoing tests and iterations in makeshift labs, which both advanced understanding yet hit repeated roadblocks. Documents reveal the growing skepticism of establishment scientists, unable to reconcile Murray's claims with classical laws, as well as suspicion from potential backers. Was he perpetrating an elaborate hoax or onto something much bigger? Through records and first-hand accounts, an intriguing picture forms of Moray's dealings with intelligence bodies amidst rumours his device could be weaponized. But was there a more ominous agenda at work against his aspirations? We detail the many strange occurrences over the decades which saw Moray's papers, prototype parts, and test data go missing or be destroyed. With his health also declining, his life's work seemed destined to evade replication by others. We outline the main prevailing theories that have emerged to explain Moray's device, from hoaxing to using hidden batteries, to somehow tapping atmospheric electricity or piezoelectric effects. His supporters argue he was ahead of his time. Experts weigh in on the claims from both sides, discussing what was technologically possible then, anomalies in reports of tests, and criticism of witnesses. With no surviving prototype, can we know what really occurred? After Murray's death, associates worked to carry on analyzing records of the invention through their foundation. We delve into their efforts at empirical replication and any progress achieved before also halting work. Newly uncovered docs from intelligence agencies cast more questions. Does metadata within point to interests in Moray's capability claims rather than debunking them? The plot thickens. 
We conduct a rare live interview with a 90 plus year old man who knew Moray personally in his later years. He shares recollections that shed light on the remarkable man's character and frustrations with hostile forces facing his ambitions. We open questions to viewers at home. Given what they've learned, what are their thoughts on Murray's prospects? Was he suppressed or did he overstate his invention's potential? Despite resistance, grassroots research communities are applying modern tools towards replicating Murray's device and evaluating his theories. We profile some of these ongoing underground efforts. If a household model of Murray's invention had been achieved, how may it have shifted 20th century technology and energy geopolitics? What doors could it still open today if finally understood? While change needs pioneers, we discuss the importance of safety oversight when tinkering at the fringes of science. With open yet careful research, answering Moray may help humanity steward tech responsibly. We check in with researchers who have acquired some of Moray's original components and schematics. They discuss ongoing forensic analysis and modern replication attempts to better understand his mysterious designs. Using his personal writings and libraries, we profile the thinkers and discoveries that may have inspired Moray's perspectives on hidden energy potentials, from Faraday to Bohr and beyond. Was he truly before his time? Experts debate why Moray faced such extreme skepticism from the scientific establishment, and whether open-minded analysis of anomalous claims is still discouraged today for fear of paradigm shifts. Where is the line between possibility and pseudoscience? Joining us live are two researchers independently investigating Moray's work. Our audience puts their questions about replication progress, critique of known tests, and the prospects of Moray truly accessing zero-point energy. In a passionate final call, underground scientists appeal for greater public support and collaboration. By openly pooling our gifts, they believe dreams like Moray's of limitless energy could be made real within our lifetime to transform society for the better. In closing, we reflect on how Moray's story encapsulates both the promise and perils of radical new ideas. By carrying on his example of curiosity, supporters aim to either solve the riddle he left behind, or prove to future generations that some dreams are too ahead of their time to realize. Thanks for watching.